Hey guys, today I'm gonna show you how to do a stop motion effect in Apple Motion. If you're not familiar with stop motion, this is what stop motion looks like. Here is the greatest music video of all time. Open up your fruit cage. That is such a jam. That is my favorite music video from when I was a kid. I've been in love with stop motion for a very long time. Typically you see stop motion done with clay, uh, but you can do it with other objects as well. Today I'm gonna show you how to do it with text. We're gonna do a text effect here in Apple Motion. Um, but you could do this with like any objects in Apple Motion. I'm just using text today. So let's dive right into Apple Motion and I'm gonna show you how we're gonna do it. For this look, I'm actually going to be doing a refrigerator magnet kind of look. So I've got an image here of a refrigerator. I'm gonna scale it up so we can see the water dispenser and the handle. So we can tell that it's a refrigerator, but we're gonna have a lot of this white negative space here where we're gonna be putting our letters. I think I was kind of in an 80s mood when I designed this, thinking about that great uh, sledgehammer video. So the first thing we're gonna do is add text. We're gonna take the drop down menu on this text tool and we're gonna select 3D text. And I am just going to type out every letter in the alphabet. And let's add some extra letters for good measure, why not? So now that we've got our letters typed out, I'm gonna scale them up a little bit uh, to make the scale a little better. Let's head on over to appearance. I'm gonna change the substance from plastic to generic. And let's play a little bit with like the depth and the weight here. Let's move that weight up to like, I don't know, 1.35. Let's crank up the depth. I'm just keeping an eye on those letters and trying to like envision, do they look like what I remember as refrigerator magnets? Let's make the front of the edge square because I remember them being very squared off. And now let's head on over to format. I'm gonna make these a little bit bigger even. And next I'm going to break these up into two lines so I can see them all on the screen at once. Now what we wanna do is change the color of these letters and we wanna make them a mix of colors. So I'm gonna head on over from our traditional arrow tool here and let's grab the transform glyph tool and now we can modify each one of these items letter by letter. So let me just highlight over here in my inspector, a grouping of letters. And you can see, if you can hardly see here, I've got this white box around the letters in my canvas. That's how I know that I've selected those. And I'm just going to make these kind of like a, a primary red. That looks good. And now let's go back to format and select our next group of letters and head back over to appearance and let's change the color of this grouping here to like a, a blue, kind of a primary blue. And let's pick our next group. Let's make this one kind of like a, I'm thinking like a big bird yellow. Let's grab our last grouping here and let's change this to green. And now what I'm going to do is take these letters one by one and move them around on my refrigerator, play with the rotation a little bit and make them look like they're really just scrambled on here like a little kid threw them up on the refrigerator. Okay, so here we are with our final result. We've sort of got our background built. You can see all of the letters we've got here. The next thing I'm going to do is select our text in our project pane. I'm going to right click. I'm going to hit duplicate. So I have two of those now. And now I'm going to go over to format in my inspector window and I'm actually gonna type the words stop motion. And I'm going to draw my attention over to here, the offset and the rotation hit the drop down and I'm gonna reset the parameter on both of those so they're just perfectly straight. And now what I'm going to do for convenience sake and to help me stay organized is I'm going to change the color of these from red 
to something totally different from what we're working with with these primary colors let's just make it purple and i'm going to change these colors later but you'll see why this helps me stay organized a little bit further down the road so now the secret to making your stop motion animation work and to do it efficiently is to start toward the end where you want your objects, whether they're letters or Skittles or M&Ms or anything, where you want them to end up. Start there and work backwards. It's going to make your life so much easier easier and that's just good life advice anyway isn't it just figure out where you want to be and work backward from there so let's draw our attention to the timeline and i'm going to queue up my playhead to the three second mark and i'm going to make sure i'm selected on my stop motion text here in the project pane i'm going to select the format tab here as well and the very important thing you need is your keyframe viewer down here in your timeline. If you are not seeing this, this is how you turn it on or off. Uh, what you wanna do is select this little group of diamonds here at the top of your timeline and make sure that is turned on. So it should be blue, do you see that? And this is gonna give you a visual representation of what we're doing up here in our canvas. So I've got my playhead selected at three seconds in, and I know this is where I want my text to end up. What we're going to do is we're going to select transform glyph. So we have all of our letters uh, changeable individually. I'm gonna select all the text and I'm going to make a keyframe here at offset and rotation. We're going to make sure that we're selected in our timeline, just like clicking your timeline, and you're going to arrow over 10 frames with the arrow key back left. And we're going to make two more keyframes here. And so what you see in our keyframe editor, you see these two keyframes with a straight line. That is what you want. Those are called like hold frames. So nothing's going to be happening between those two 10 frames. Now you wanna arrow back over one frame and we're going to make keyframes at this point and now we're going to be moving the letters individually and so i'm going to start with the s and i'm going to move it and rotate it a hair click on next one to the t so on each letter i'm moving the x value i'm moving the y value and I'm rotating it just a little. Now we want to click back down to our timeline and we want to arrow back 10 frames. So we're starting with that last keyframe we made. We're going to make sure all of our text is selected and we're going to make keyframes for both offset and rotation again. Now, this is what you want to see. Let's look closely at our keyframe editor. I'm going to zoom in so you can see what's happening. In between these short little keyframes, you see that the values have changed a little bit. If you look really close, you can see all the lines have moved a little bit. In between our wide set 10 frame keyframes, everything is holding steady. 10 frames holding steady. Over the course of one frame, everything jumps, and then for the next 10 frames, it holds steady. That is the rhythm you want. I've played around with this a lot. In my opinion, this is kind of the way to go. Um, but for your own purposes, you could probably adjust the number of hold frames to be shorter than 10 frames or longer than 10 frames. I find that 10 hold frames looks good to me, but you want to make sure that the motion changes only over the duration of one frame. So now what we're going to do is make sure we're selected in our timeline. At the last keyframe we made, we're gonna arrow back one more. We're gonna make sure all of our text is selected and we're gonna make keyframes again for offset and rotation. And then again, we're gonna move them again. And you can make these changes either in your canvas or over here in the inspector window. And as you go along, you want to keep an eye on that keyframe editor. Make sure that the lines between your hold keyframes are holding steady. You haven't messed something up entirely because it's really hard to go back and fix. So you really just need to keep track of what you're doing. 
because this is very easy to mess up when you're working with such like intricate keyframes. Okay, now that we've modified all of those individual letters, let's go back to the project timeline. We're gonna arrow back 10 frames again, select all of our text, create those two keyframes on offset and rotation, arrow back one keyframe, And we're going to start that all over again. Like I said, stop motion is a tedious process. I'm not going to make you sit here and watch me do it. I'm going to speed this all up for you, but I got to keep doing it manually. working on my stop motion animation, let me just remind you that you are watching this video on my new Apple Motion and Final Cut Pro dedicated channel. If you're not subscribed to this Jen Jager channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Okay, so I've got my letters as scattered as I can get them. At this point, I'm just going to scrub through for you so you can see the action here. And now there's a couple other quick steps we're going to take. First, down here in our keyframe editor, I'm going to draw a box around all of my keyframes to select all of them. I'm going to right click. I'm going to arrow over on interpolation and I'm going to make them all linear. So there's no handles and it's all very linear movement. Now let's really make these letters blend in with the rest of the letters we have in our refrigerator. So I'm going to cue my playhead up to the beginning of the animation where they're really scattered. And now let's head on over to appearance. We're still on transform glyph, so you can see my S is selected here. And let's just choose colors that are really gonna make these purple letters disappear and be scattered in with the rest of our letters. So let's take a look at our finished animation. So cute, right? Such a throwback. Do kids today still use like alphabet magnets? Let me know in the comments if you have kids and you know the answer to this question. Uh, this is a great effect that you can use in a lot of different ways. And like I said earlier, it doesn't have to be letters. Uh, if you've just got the time and the patience, you can make a really cool stop animation look in Apple Motion. Reminder, you are watching this on my new Apple Motion and Final Cut dedicated channel. So if you haven't subscribed to this channel already, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you again.